All right. Well, that's weird. Haven't been mic'd up. Not used to that. My name is Clayton. I work for uh, Airman Magazine and Air Force TV right across the street. As Jamie said, uh, I spent a short time here at the schoolhouse as an instructor uh, before I switched to the dark side. Now, <laughs> before we get started, I want to talk about being a one-man band in social media. And I feel like that's something that has been alluded to here, but hasn't really been talked about yet. How many people here currently operate social media or know somebody that operates a social media platform single-handedly? Pretty much everyone, yeah? I feel your pain. Me too. Uh, so prior to working at Emory Magazine, I worked for the uh, Marine Corps' flagship uh, social media platforms. And we had a team of like 12, 13 people. It was glorious. It was glorious. And then I got hired at Emory Magazine, and it's just me. And there was a lot of uh, adapting that had to happen. So, oh, here we go. If you were to log on to the Airman Magazine Facebook page, you may see something like this. Um, now, for Air Force TV and Airman Magazine, they were very broadcast heavy for a very long time. Um, here at the schoolhouse, we know there are a lot of people that enjoy broadcasting, and they enjoy 30-minute programs, and they enjoy AFN. And that doesn't really quite jive with social media. So what we found was we have this uh, product called Blue. And initially, it was a very long product. We're talking 30 minutes on Facebook. Nobody was watching it. And we were like, OK, how do we tackle this problem? How do we augment social media to where it's not replacing Blue, but we're actually helping amplify it? So this is what we ended up doing. We spliced it into a shorter teaser. And then we went on to tease them to our YouTube, like so. We are optimized for stealth. We can talk hypotheticals all day long, but our goal is to get in undetected, which if you read all the reports and all the testing that we've done and the training that I've been a part of as well, it is 100% working. We fought F-16s, we fought F-15s, and if you ask the guys that we have fought, they have not been able to even pick us up yet, and they know we're there. So just imagine what we can do to people that don't know we're there, and they now have to face the full brunt of an F-35. Okay, so that's a quick teaser for our F-35 Blue that recently came out a few weeks ago. That is the F-35. That is the hot button issue for the Air Force. We were trying, I mean, everybody talks about the F-35. This is the numbers for the episode side by side when we upload the full episode and the 30 second teaser. This is the Facebook. So on the left side, you see the teaser video and that's the audience retention rate. And on the right side, you see the full length video about eight minutes long. The difference here is quite obvious. On the right side, they're not even, 99% of the audience isn't even getting past the first 20 seconds, which means they're not even getting past the opening title slide, you know. You got like cool stuff going across the screen and the after effects, everybody spends much time on. We're on the left side, a good majority is getting to the end of that 35 second video. They're hearing a testimony from an Air Force pilot letting them know that the F-35 is capable and is worth having, and we're getting our command message across. So the question becomes, what would you rather have? Would you rather have people watching 30 seconds and getting the gist, or 1% watching maybe to halfway and not quite getting it? You gotta, you gotta weigh, you gotta weigh the pros and cons. It's also important to look on the bottom of those graphics right there. You see the autoplay and the click to play. Most people aren't even going to click on the video to hear the audio. Most of them are on a train heading to work, they're at the dinner table, they're in a crappy social media brief, and they don't want to turn on the audio. <laughs> so you have to keep that in mind. You have to keep the user's habits in mind. How many of us actually turn on the audio? I find probably most of you probably don't. I'll find myself in a situation where I have every opportunity to turn on the audio, and I won't. I'll just let it sit and play, and I'll read the captions. I don't know why, but I do. So. We still, we still find value in the longer piece, though. That eight-minute product is not dead and is not to go to waste, because there's a lot of value in it. So what we do is we take that 30-second teaser. We give, them, we give the masses the gist of the story. But for those that are really interested and want to find out more, we send them to our YouTube. Now, why do we do that? Because this is our YouTube retention rate. Full video on YouTube 
we're talking 46% is the average viewer viewed up to 46% of the video, almost at four minutes exactly. Having anybody stick around for four minutes is amazing, let alone the average viewer. Um, what else is important about this is the bottom graphic, the computer versus the mobile phone. So on Facebook, 99% of our audience is on the mobile phone. That means they've got that little tiny screen, they're on the go, and they're not really interested in watching a long video. But on YouTube, we find that they're at work, they're at school, they're at their desktop at home, they're sitting down, they're on the computer, they're engaged, a big screen, and they're ready to watch. Got their headphones on, they're interested. And that's just something else that we picked up on. So if we want somebody to really stick around, and really watch the full product, we'll send them to our YouTube page. And uh, if you actually dive a little bit deeper, we go to find out who is, who is watching our YouTube page, and it comes out to be mostly um, older folks. It comes out to be people in the Maryland, D.C. area, politicians per se. Uh, most of our engagement comes from our .mil page. It also comes from popular blogs. Some comes from uh, f35.com. So you get to, when you, we'll get into the analytics, but you really get to see why people do what they do on each platform. You cannot just stay cookie cutter anymore. Another great thing to do is subtitles. Now, a lot of you have seen these videos where they've got the big yellow text. I think like now this kind of pioneered it like two years ago or maybe a year and a half ago. And typically they have no words. It's just music if they even click on it. And it's all subtitles, all across the bottom, big yellow letters, whatever. Everybody's doing it now, but I remember when this first became a thing, there were some public affairs professionals out there that were just railing against this because it goes against every aspect of storytelling that they've been taught since day one. But if it works, join them. So for example, right here, all we captioned was, this man is a living legend, help us share his story, link to the full video. And the entire thing really has no words. It is just purely captions until the very end. The war to end all wars had ended some 20 years before in November of 1918. It was on these missions that a young lanky man from eastern Nebraska. out of three burning airplanes. <laughs> He's like, oh, it's not hard. Uh, it's a really impactful story. And if you watch the full video, it's even more impactful than that. But what we found was if we're able to cut this up into a 30, 40 second video, uh, put the subtitles over to give them the main highlights of his story, and then throw in the audio at the end, it made for a really great video. And uh, the analytics on YouTube also did very well. Moving on, so we've covered the subtitles there. How about capitalizing on trends? People talked about that, especially with Twitter. People like to capitalize on the hashtags and do the campaigns. Um, you also have to be very resourceful and really, really scratch tooth and nail for your content, especially when you're at a smaller base or a wing or a ship. Content can be scarce, I know, I really do. Uh, however, there's nothing that says you can't go and scour the internet and look for things that are applicable to your page I mean, I've seen plenty of pages share from, uh, you know, news outlets that are uh, where the inf information is verified, yet you might not have a story out on it. I've seen that happen quite a bit. Uh, I personally like to go to Reddit. Reddit is one of my favorite websites in the whole wide world. And I was browsing it one day, and on the front of Reddit, it's like a big forum, like just a crazy huge forum. Uh, this video popped up. It had a ton of votes on it. And it was during the Pokemon Go craze, whenever it was just going nuts about Pokemon Go. And uh, well, basically, some extremely talented 13-year-old kid made this, and I'm excited <laughs> to share it with you now.
so that was at the height of the Pokemon Go craze. And we captioned it, uh, uh, well, how else did you think they got out there? Well, thanks to the United States Air Force. And uh, at the bottom, we, you know, I reached out to them. I said uh, who I was. I said who I worked for. And I said, we'd really love to share your video. Do we have your permission? And he said, absolutely. As long as you credit me in the comment section. I said, OK, great. Kept it uh, for our records that he gave us a permission. And, and we, we ended up sharing it. And I think the updated graphic to that would be somewhere more around like 5 million reach and a couple million views. So was it a success? Depending on what your objective is, I'd say yes, for us, it really was, especially on a slow day when we were scrounging for content. Next up is trying new tools. Uh, tools are just that. Uh, you know, we, we harp on the basics here at the schoolhouse. However, tools are a really great way to amplify uh, and get the message out to your audience. So recently, a few months ago in December, uh, we had the F-4 Phantom retire from service from the Air Force. It was a workhorse of an airplane. Uh, it was a great plane during Vietnam. And it has a very, very uh, crazy fan base like for some reason like they're just they're absolutely nuts about this plane they really are and the day it was retiring we sent our, our folks out there to get a story done we were doing you know your typical written story some photos some video but, I, but we were like you know what hey wait let's take a second let's pre-plan a little bit stick one GoPro in the cockpit and stick one 360 cam in the cockpit and just by doing that alone we were able to get a video together, a 360 video, to tease the audience to the full story. That very same day, we had them edit the video, send it back to me back here, uh, and I posted it. Like took them almost like two hours. And that very same day, the F4 retired. We were able to show the final last flight the F4 was ever going to take in 360 degrees, which is really really cool. Now, obviously, it won't let me do 360 degrees on Prezi. However, I did a quick screen grab and screen record, and. This is kind of like what the audience would see when they're getting ready to watch the video. Everyone's going nuts because they get to see the pilot and the cockpit and the planes going by and the ground flying by. It's awesome. It's just really cool for them to relive it uh, if they were former pilots or if they're just fanatics. It's cool for them too. Something else that you can do on Facebook now, which is awesome, is you can download a heat map for the 360 video. Totally free, right on the back end uh, analytics of Facebook. And it'll actually tell you, based on the heat map, where your audience is looking during the video, during the duration. So if your video is doing really bad, you can look at it and be like, oh yeah, because we don't have enough people passing through at this point, or we don't have enough you know, action going this way. You have to give them an incentive to turn. And by doing that, you can really learn and teach yourself what makes a great 360 video. So again, that's on the, that's on the analytics, on the free analytics back, back into Facebook for the 360 video. All right, I see a lot of people scribbling. Give me a second. What's that? The heat map, yes. Again, one more time, the heat map on the Facebook analytics. So if you go to insights, go to posts, and then click on your 360 video. To the right of that, there will be a little button that says download heat map. And you can download for free. It will give you an MP4 version of your video. You can open it in QuickTime or whatever you have on your computer. And uh, it will just it will show you like red and green and yellow, and it will as the video goes, it will change the colors to show you where people are looking around your video. So you can really learn after one or two videos what makes a great 360 video. I think everybody knows you really you can't just plop a 360 anywhere. You have to entice your followers to move around, you know. But that's a really great way to justify what you're doing is to look at that heat map. Okay. So moving on, dealing with negative comments, this is a hot button issue for a lot of people. Uh, right off the bat, I'm going to recommend that everybody, also because it's a rule, to have an agreement in your uh, Facebook About section or somewhere linked to your Instagram account or your Twitter, basically saying your rules of engagement for social media. What will you allow? What will you not allow? It's your rules. It's your page. And they're up to you to decide. Uh, at your discretion, and, uh, and I think that is a great way to cover your butt. With that disclaimer being said, this article came across my desk one day, and it was very, um, the office was like, holy cow, this is going to be a hard one to push out. And because at the time, there was absolutely no rules regarding the LGBT community in the military, let alone the Air Force. Now, the Air Force being the Air Force, said, we're going to charge ahead, 
and be the first ones to, uh, to, to make change here. And this article came across my desk. And essentially, uh, this woman was a major. She was formerly a male in the, in the Air Force. But while she was in uniform, she was wearing leggings. She was wearing women's underwear. She was uh, technically out of uniform, but nobody knew. And she had a very inter she had the internal struggle of deciding whether or not is it right to be a man, is it right to be a woman. This is a very touchy topic in today's society, I know. And when we had 50,000 followers at this time, 50,000 followers for us at the time was low. And they were all veteran heavy. We're talking older veterans, mostly male. And the typical stereotype of those, of those people are pure hatred towards the LGBT community um, on our page. We, I mean, I'm just being blunt. They absolutely had some disgraceful comments. However, we knew this was going to be happening. We knew that our audience was going to react in an unfavorable way. We also knew that the audience we currently had was not the audience that we wanted to have a year from then. Right now, the audience we have right now on this page is not the same audience that we had a year and a half ago. And we did that in a very strategic way. So we sat down and we said, this is going to go very poorly right off the bat. We know this. The first comments within the first five minutes went as follows. I am glad that I retired from the Air Force 25 years ago. At least we knew the difference between a man and a woman. Really, I'm proud to be an Air Force veter veteran, but this isn't something that I want to see in an Airman magazine. I'm still shaking my head and so on. Those were the more tame comments. I had to delete several just straight hate comments that went, again, went against our uh, protocol in our about section about our rules of engagement. However, knowing that this was going to be the initial response to this article, I mean, it wasn't gonna shock us because our veteran heavy presence, um, we decided to be proactive. Many people, when you complete a product, you often send it out to a news outlet. You might try to get your, your message out some way. Well, we turned to Reddit again. And I was like, you know what? Let's just post it up in the military section. Let's post it up in the LGBT section and a couple other uh, LGBT friendly subreddits. Just the article, just the headline, and let it sit, see how it does. And within 15, 20 minutes, the numbers started skyrocketing and the comment interaction really started to change. At first it was bickering back and forth as uh, commonly, what, what, people fight on the internet? No way. <laughs> yes, they do. And at first it wasn't great, uh, but after a while, then we started getting LGBT airmen and airmen that were supporter of those, of, those, uh, of those ideals. And also, we were like, you know what? This is a priority of the Secretary of the Air Force. This is the way the military is heading. This is our messaging. We're not going to hide from the truth. We want to get this message out there. We want to inform the public. So we're going to get as many people on this as we can and get a good discussion. And uh, the comments really did take a turn. Uh, they said, if you're in a war zone and someone's got your back, you don't care what gender they are as long as they got your back. Uh, as an airman myself, I see nothing wrong with this. This is exactly why we fight for freedom around the world. We need to recognize the right of all of our citizens and truly become the shining city on the hill. Really well-versed airman right there. And it keeps going, like, this really great stuff. And you'll see some of them have one, two, up to 13 uh, interactions between them. And it's just, and it's, I, for the first time ever on the internet, I saw people come to a common understanding and a common ground from two political just and societal differences. It's, just the, most, it's the most ridiculous thing you could think and it, uh, of, of the polar opposites that they were. And they actually met in the middle in a lot of instances. And it was really cool to watch. Now, if you've ever been to a small base or a small wing or a ship, uh, brass likes to get real scared real quick when they hear a bad comment. It's human nature. When someone talks smack about you, you're like, oh man, freeze up. And oftentimes we're like, okay, take it down, take the post down right now. And we're like, hold on, look, <laughs> we have 75 comments here. And of those 75, maybe 10 are negative, but then you got everybody else fighting back against that, that negativity. Facebook recently released the like, love, laugh, sad, happy, bloated button. And you can now, <laughs> 386 people like this, six people love it. You know, and then we've got 28 angry people and like 10 to 15 angry people in the comments. I don't care about those people. I care about the other people and they care about this post and they care about this magazine. We end up losing probably 400 followers from this post. Some people even said, share this post. Share this post to let the world know what Aaron Magazine stands for. And I'm like, oh no. <laughs> 
don't share this post and let them know what our priorities are. Uh, and then some people said they're unfollowing us. And, and honestly, I say, good, we don't want you because you don't align with our priorities and you're cancerous to our organization. So we may have lost 400, but we gained two or 3,000. So being resourceful, thinking outside the box, uh, not going into something without a plan and being strategic is really going to make all the difference when you're dealing not only just with trolls, but with priorities or, or, or things that may face your page that aren't popular in society. Moving on. So sharing with like-minded pages, this is something that uh, I don't think enough people really do. There's a case to be made that a lot of people say, yes, the Facebook algorithm, we want all the numbers, we want all the, we want all the audience and the retention and everything else. That's great to a degree. But we have something, something that every Fortune 500 company wants, and that's a web. How many bases and wings and ships do we have all around the world? I know there's companies like Red Bull and Mountain Dew and whatever, whatever, take your pick. They have 14, 15 social media platforms on the same, or, or different properties on the same platform, different Facebooks, all with the same messaging, all under the same company. But they're trying so hard, paying crazy buku bucks, trying to get what we already have. We just don't utilize it. And if we shared with each other more, especially when we have you know different army bases, for example, I mean, how many airborne units can you, can you go through and, and share from each other and have similar strategic interests? It's crazy. It really is. So right here, what you're seeing is um, this is from Mountain Home Air Force Base um, in Idaho. And we shared from them two times that month. And what's great about this is they happen to have a priority. I mean, we talked about this a little bit earlier. Wings and bases and smaller ships and everything else like that should already be operating under priorities that in some way align with the top. You know, you give the top direction and then they kind of trickle down and fall under that in some way. So off the top of my head, I can't remember the post exactly, but they did have something that really hit the nail on the head that month for what we were trying to communicate. We shared from them, they got a nice boost in numbers. So then later down the road when I said, hey, could you possibly share this from us? And they're like, yeah, of course, yeah, why not? You scratch my back, I scratch your back. It really truly does do great, it does wonders, especially uh, uh, in the Air Force side of things, it's very plain centric. So it's very easy to find common ground with a lot of uh, wings and bases and such. So I really highly recommend you establish a really good um, line of communication between other pages. Truly, it's a big deal. I was having a conversation here a little bit earlier and uh, it was about talking to a flagship or reaching out to Airman Magazine or All Hands Magazine or Soldiers. We love that, like truly, we love that. We'll tell you if your product sucks, be totally honest with you, but I love when somebody engages with me and is flexible and is willing to mold their product to something that will be better. I mean, as soon as somebody sends me a product, that has a you know 10 second slate on it with an After Effects whirly thing going. I'm like, if you lose that, I'll share it, and they'll be like, done. To lose it, well, it's great. Everybody's happy. But if they post it and then say, hey, share this, I'm like, no, never. I will not do that. So you got to be flexible. Posting schedule, obviously a great tool to use. Personally, I don't use any uh, third party analytics or, any, or or schedulers or anything like that, other than TweetDeck for Twitter, <clears throat> but the Facebook scheduler is great. And we're going to talk about how you identify when to schedule and how to do that. So this chart right here is your peak as our peak hours uh, for Airman Magazine. Uh, typically, we post three times a day. And as you can see, that those times are around 9 o'clock. And we'll try to hit that wave right there. We'll get something around 11, 1130, and then one more time before bed and nine o'clock. This, this chart right here is showing when your audience is on Facebook. When your audience is on Facebook. Now something that's interesting, I'm probably gonna make the cameraman go lose their mind, but I'm gonna move. So when we first started our page, this right here was like, this blue bar was nothing. It was nothing, 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 and then noon spike, nothing, 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 and then like six or seven spike, and then nothing, nothing, nothing. And what we found was it was because we had that veteran heavy presence. So what are veterans doing? The older folks, really, really older folks I'm talking, not just like just got out. 
they're on their la they're on their computers, they're on their laptops or whatever. So they're getting on them at lunch, then they're getting on them before bed, and then they're closing out and they're going to bed. That's not who we want to be engaging. We want to be engaging airmen, active duty airmen. And now today we really are hitting the nail on the head, or seem to be, based on what we know about our audience. Again, these are all free analytics on the back end of Facebook, uh, Twitter. A uh, Twitter guy there talked about analytics.twitter. A great tool to use, we'll talk about it here. So as you can see, typically week to week, we're, we're I would say 65 to 70% of our audience is between the ages of 18 to 35. That's where we want it to be. That's really where we want to be. And we want to keep getting younger actually. Um, where we have a deal we're working up right now with Recruiting Command to get a paperback Airman Magazine in every recruiter's office across the country, which would be great because we get to revive the paperback a little bit, bring some love to that and bring some interest back to the younger recruits. That's one strategy we have right now to try to get the younger people back on our page. Now, who we're talking to on Facebook is different from who we are talking to and who we want to talk to on Twitter. Facebook is a very young crowd, right? However, Twitter is different. And Twitter analytics, by the way, they go insanely in depth. We're talking like crazy. We can get into your marital status, your income, your net worth, it gets a little crazy. And these are free analytics, totally free on the back end of Twitter, Twitter analytics. But what it does tell us is who we're talking to. It tells us who's interested in business and politics. It tells us what age they are. We find that we're talking to a lot of married airmen. That means when we pay, post anything about BAH rates <clears throat> or, or anything like that that might affect them or their kids and their families, those posts do better. And so we mold our posts a little bit differently to fit Twitter as opposed to Facebook and as opposed to Instagram. And finally, all this, all this truly means nothing. It should mean nothing to you unless you analyze it, export it, and you package it correctly. This will mean nothing to you. This will be a total waste of your time the past 30 minutes I've been talking because who, who's it all for? Well, typically it's for your commander. And the commander is a busy person. He or she does not have time for BS. We know this. So what I recommend to people is to create a report, but not just any report. Typically, people get stuck in this area where they're, they're creating reports based on numbers. How great did this cat video do? Wow, it got 4 million views? That's insane. That's crazy. Yeah, but what does the commander care? What, how did it help airmen? How did it change a priority on base? How did it elevate one of the commander's intent, uh, his priorities. So this is, a, this is something that I created uh, for the Marines out in Hawaii. <clears throat> they asked for a template and I said, okay, here we go. What I would do, they said the commander is a very busy man. He never has time for us. And if he does, we gotta be really, really quick because like I said, he's got tens of things. At the time they had a lot of stuff going on out there. And so I said, here's what you do. You create your one page report. You put Commander Schmuckatelli's name on the top. Big, bold letters. It's going to catch his eye. He's going to be like, that's my name. <laughs> <laughs> and then right under that, you're going to put his priorities, his top, let's say, eight to ten priorities. And he'll be like, I care about that stuff. So already you got him engaged. You got his name, you got his priorities. And then right below that, you hit him with the posts. You let him know what you posted to elevate his priorities. And then below that, you can give the context. How did that affect the base? How, what, what did those numbers mean to him? Why should he care? And before long, you're going to find that your commander is going to start coming to you and asking things of you. But you're going to keep him informed, and he's going to make sense when he's asking something, not just make this go viral. We're going to have intent behind something. So this is a great visual way to let your commander know, hey, this is how we're helping you out, and this is how we can help in the future. So. On that note, I think that's all we got. And my pink jammed up. There we go. My name's Clayton. I work over across the street, Airman Magazine, Air Force TV. You can come ask me questions anytime. But we'll take some right now. Any questions? Yes, sir. Okay. Hello? Okay. Uh, I want, real quick, want to go back to the, the, transgender article. I, I never would have thought about 
putting my my stories, uh, anything like that, out on Reddit. Mm -hmm. Do you do you often not post often. your material there? And and if so, has that really turned your numbers? Sure, not often. I'm not saying the secret here is everybody go on Reddit and start spamming the Air Force Reddit subreddit. <laughs> They'll sniff you out quick. Trust me, they're smart. What I am saying is uh, the the occasion called for it. The occasion called for a medium in which mostly young people are going to be on, uh, progressives, in fact, and also that we, we realize that the LGBT, if we want this message to go out to LGBT folks and really inform them, hey, this is our stance, what better way than to go on the subreddit for LGBT folks? And it was just kind of a no-brainer in that instance. Let's do, man, in the back. Thanks. I was wondering if you could go back to the beginning and talk a little bit more about how you connect your snippets to the longer videos. Sure. Yeah, Do you, are you able to track, like, I tweeted about the snippet, and then I saw 50 more readers on YouTube. Like, how do you connect the two? Because we have a hard time getting people to go from one thing to the other. Sure. It's really funny you mention that, because I swear this happened this morning. I'm walking into work, and we have a director ahead for the Air Force TV side. And I'm walking, I just happen to be walking past his office at this exact moment where I hear him yell, what the heck, 1,500 more views, what happened? And, and I'm just like, well, well either, he's either happy or, or not happy. And he sounded happy. So uh, he's, him and another guy are trying to figure it out. They're furiously trying to navigate through the analytics of, their, of the YouTube page that we have. And, and I happened to pop my head in. I was like, I shared that last night. And he was like, this is great. And what happened was, um, Last night, I posted a 30-second uh, F-35 video, and it teased to the blue. Now, there's a trick that we do. We try, to, we try to put something that's you know pretty provocative in the top layer of text, and then directly below that, before the third line, we put the link. And the reason, the reason being is because you don't want them to hit click to see more. It's so hard to get people to click through a barrier. You know, it condenses the text. I want them to see that blue link above that line. Uh, so that's one thing that we do. Again, it's extremely hard to get people to click through to a video, and you re they really have to have an interest in it. F-35 is the most, I mean, that is the topic for the Air Force, and it's still difficult to get them to click through to the video. So uh, I would say keep trying it. Find out what works for you. What works for me might not work for you, but I would say um, run tests. See how the full video does versus the shorter video. Uh, you can see how many people click through to your link on Facebook on the analytics side. Uh, you can also make gov shorteners. There's a, if you guys don't use the gov shortener website, it's super easy to sign up. And uh, you can track link clicks through that as well. So just Google gov shortener, create an account with your .mil, and you're good to go. Hit him. Hey, Clay. Hello? Hey, Clay. Um, so for people who know you, it's easy to get all this information because we have the pipeline to Clay. Right, and so I just wanted to ask for people who don't want to be your friend, who um, where can they go to get these up-to-date tactics and and procedures and stuff? Like, what what are some best practices? What should they be paying attention to to find some of this stuff uh, when instead of having to come to Dinfo's uh, social or wait for the Dinfo social 2018? Mm -hmm. Sure, sure. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of great resources out there. The internet is vast. If I had a nickel for every time I had a 12-year-old teach me how to do something on YouTube, I'd be a rich man. Uh, but if you really want to, if you really have a question about anything, I do stress just message our page. At the very least, message our page. I will respond to you. Um, I, I put my, my Twitter and my Facebook and stuff up on that graphic for a reason because I truly do want you all to reach out to me if you ever have any questions. Ever, I'm never too busy. Ever, because I work for the government. Just kidding. <laughs> but truly, I want you to reach out. I want you, I would put my personal email up there. Please reach out. Please. I've always got a phone on me. In fact, I have two phones on me. So, if, I mean, I wish there was a better answer that we all had one big forum that was we just all log on to. I'm like, oh, that's how you do that. Great. But um, you really got to just feel out, ask for advice, reach out to people. It's the only way you're going to learn. To be Clay's friend. Be Clay's friend. No? Oh. Uh, so uh, I'm a little bit shy on this one. Uh, the, the story about uh, the transgender service member, uh, she's actually a, a very good friend of mine. And um, 
I, I'm curious uh, at, about two things in that <laughs> process when we're talking about how to deal with anticipated negative feedback. One is, um, if you'll let me do both at the same time. Sure, the, the first question is, you know, what kind of, of meeting, who did you bring in to sit down and talk about what strategies you might take to, to plan for that? Uh -huh. And the second is, and I think you, you kind of uh, mentioned it in passing, but with that initial negative reaction, you know, was she, because I, 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 talking with her, she's always been a little bit reserved. Right. So I can imagine that her initial reaction seeing that would have been regret and maybe wanting to pull back. And, you know, how did you have that conversation and continue to maintain that presence and get the message out while also uh, sure. know, accounting for, for her personal concerns? No, that's, that's a great question, absolutely. So who we brought into the meeting to answer your first part of that question is we brought myself, our ops manager, and our head editor into a meeting. We, we just had a quick, like literally it was the side of my desk, and we were like, how are we gonna do this? Because it came, well here's the thing, it came to me on a Friday. I'm not gonna post this article on a Saturday because I wanna have a life on the weekend. So we said Monday morning, we're gonna come together, we're gonna figure this out, and we're gonna, we're gonna go forward there. So we, we took a quick breather, came at it uh, on Monday morning, decided that we were going to post it to Reddit to see, because we didn't know if it was gonna work, you know, we were just trying it. And that ended up working. Now we knew right off the get-go that it was going to have a negative, like initial push. And I honestly think she might have known that too. I mean, obviously she knows she wore the uniform and she knows what she had to go through to get to where she is now. So I think that she may have been anticipating it. When a, if a client, or I say client, if a subject were to come to us a, and say, you know, pull this, we would obviously take it into consideration, no doubt. No doubt. If a client comes to us and say, pull this, we will, because it's the client. Here's the thing, though. So for example, this is an interesting topic that you brought up. We had a funeral <clears throat> happen a few months ago for an airman. The airman had approval to be there from the family. And, um, and we, the photos were beautiful. We posted it, uh, and, and I thought in a very tactful manner. And we got a, then got a message uh, from a very, very close family member uh, that said, take these photos down now. So now you're faced with publicly released photos, a very touchy subject, and a very, very angry um, family relative, family member. So we ended up not pulling the photo. And that decision came because the photographer had permission to be there and they were already released. Deleting something after it's already released is like admitting you know, it's, it, it alludes to the fact that you, that you were wrong. And, uh, and as long as you can trust your gut and say, we did this in a tactful manner, what we did uh, was for the right reasons, I think you'll be okay. I think you'll be okay. So I hope that answers uh, to some degree your question. Cool. Anybody else? Absolutely we do, so I'll wrap this up. Sure, so the question was, if you're a smaller wing or a base and they reach out to you, how does, that, how does the discourse go there? How do, how, do, how do we reply to them? Do we send them analytics afterwards? The answer is absolutely yes. If you ask for it, we'll give you a screenshots of the analytics. And we really do encourage people to reach out um, because, let's see, we have, we have, we've had so many examples. For example, Weekend Photos, it's a weekly thing we do. We take about 12 to 13 of the best photos around the Air Force, we post them in an album, and we give the followers the ability to vote on their favorite photo. What happens is a favorite photo will then be selected as our cover photo for the week. So they have some stake in the game, the photographers get excited. It, be, it has become a point now where it's an, it's an EPR bullet, it's, it's a bullet point for, their, uh, for these airmen. Uh, they got a photo on, on Airman Magazine's weekend photos. Like, it's no crap, it's actually a bullet point, which is crazy to think about now. Um, 
So, and if they win, they really do lose their minds. You have the whole base then pulling for them. Uh, it's one of our better posts every week, and that's just one example. Now, actually, before I left the office to come here today, we had one of our airmen reaching out and calling Wings, saying, do you have any photos that you're particularly proud of? We're scoping them out for Friday when we release it. Man. Um Quick question for you. So I run uh, social media for Air Force Base Command. Mm -hmm. And as you can imagine, we have an extremely diverse audience um, that includes very strange people as well as um, about a 64% <laughs> foreign national audience. Right. So, you know, we can't say that, you know, 60% of our audience is former service members or veterans. Um, mm -hmm. Do you have any suggestions for dealing with an audience that, that's that diverse, uh, that's global? Um, Man, you know. You, you know, you guys are in a great position, though. Uh, by the way, you guys do a great job. I will say this. Also, you have a, someone that works under you named uh, Sal. He's he's, he's wonderful. Tech Sergeant Sal and Eatry, yeah. Yep, he's a wonderful. He's a wonderful guy. He reaches out constantly for edits. Reaches out constantly for uh, for improvements. I want to say he's wonderful, and that's the he's a staple of what I'm talking about when somebody reaches out and, and asks for for critiques. Uh, on that note, I think that. It's really, you have a unique opportunity that not many other people have. You have an opportunity where, where some base in the middle of nowhere is like, what do we post? You guys have the opportunity to just like really just, the, the, the sky's the limit, literally, Space Command. So like, that was really cheesy. But like, seriously, you guys can absolutely, uh, you guys have a lot more, I, I, honestly, I'd love to talk to you about maybe some campaigns. I mean, you can talk about space all day, maybe getting on board with NASA, we'll talk, we'll talk. But I think you are in a really good position. Just gotta. Sometimes when when you're in a position, I do it too. You know, you, uh, you start. You try to think outside the box, and it just, you know, I need to push. And I think when you when you uh, talk to other people and you guys really communicate with each other, I think we can come up with some cool ideas. So we'll talk. Cool. Anybody else going once? Going twice. All right. Thank you, everybody. Appreciate it.